Hello, I'm Pedro and welcome to the homestead. Today I'd like to reflect upon seven strategies for success in the homestead. I'd like to share this as a starting point. Perhaps you are at that um, stage where you are uh, starting a homestead, you are thinking about it, you're already um, on it. So we have been homesteading for over 10 years now. Although uh, in this property that we live at, we've been here for seven years and not only have we been homesteading and growing most of our food we are raising a family have four kids and both my wife and i have full-time jobs outside the farm in addition to that our homestead has become a family a commercial farm we currently um, have um, a csa program a community supported agriculture program uh, where we um, sell weekly shares of our of our uh, produce, what we grow here. We also um, sell at a local farmers market, and our uh, outlet, the market has been has been growing dramatically over the past four years. This is going to be the fifth season that we're going to be um, attending farmers markets. Well, but how do we do all this? It sounds like daunting, as if we have no life, and it's I would say quite the opposite. We have a wonderful life. We we love this. Over the years, we've we've learned a great deal, and we continue to learn every single day. We've made many mistakes. So what we would like to do is share with you our top seven strategies to make the um, homestead venture exciting, uh, meaningful, useful, and profitable. And so let's jump into those things and, and hopefully this is something that you can benefit from. So the first strategy is plan for success. And I know that's that's what everybody's planning for, but let's break it down. Yes, we're planning for success. No one plans for failure, but we need to really take a step back and and decide how we're going to be successful. And perhaps the best thing we can do to be successful is making sure we know what you have to work with. Okay, so uh, observation, get to know your site and give yourself some time to get to know the things that you have to work with, your soil, your your uh, uh, slopes and your rain and all of those things. But rather than trying to do a lot at once, just start with something very small, like a small garden, okay, like a small garden and, and then see how things do there. And then you're just going to scale that up as the time comes and you get to know your and you get to know your side. There's a lot of value in, in being adventurous. We we want to be aggressive because, well, obviously, you know, for some of you, you might thinking about, well, I'm going to feed my family out of this, and so I, I need I need I need to get going. But again, trying to accomplish too much at once can just result in burn burnouts and and disappointments because, well most likely because we're ignorant of what we have to work with. So if you plan to do animals, for example, start out small and start out with just one species. That's what we did. We we had a we have still in place a rule uh, in our homestead. We only bring one new animal species every year. That gives us time to get to know that species and even the breeds within the species and get to learn as much as we can about them, uh, to know their nature and to see how they adapt and how we adapt to them. And and then, you know, uh, as time goes by, you can expand your flock or you can decide whether or not that's the right species for, for you. But you have something, um, some kind of experience that you build uh, that you built in before you bring another animal species because otherwise it can be overwhelming. Okay. Strategy number two, networking. So get to know your neighbors. Get to know people in the area where you're starting your homestead. They can be a great resource. They know, they've been around the area longer than you have and they know some of the weather patterns they may actually know a lot about your your site uh, i remember when we moved here our neighbor just met him and so i was explaining him what things that i wanted to to implement here and and ask him what do you know about this this piece of land and he gave me some invaluable tips like things like well this 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 family they've lived here their whole life 
And so they knew about the type of agricultural practices that were here. And so he had a little bit of a historical record that was no, written nowhere. And so um, it was significant then because it teaches you a little bit of what to expect with regards to the soil, with the ground and, and weather and all of those things. Once you establish that relationship, you can learn about, you know, if it's people who, who already grow food, learn about their practices and, and techniques and, and don't be critical of them. You know, I, I, I hardly, my, my agricultural practices are very different from what my neighbors around do, but I'm very respectful of what they do. And so I come and I learn from them and we, we interact and, and more importantly, you know, this is the people that you rely upon for it for when you need things, right? And so um, if you grow something that they don't, you know, share, share with them and they will do the same with you. And a number of advantages to this model, right, in that you don't have to grow absolutely everything. You can rely on, on your neighbors or, or in the, on the community for uh, to provide for the things that you are not producing or do not not the moment and by the same token you can help them and so you form these strong bonds with the community that is that is useful get to know farmers and and you get so you you get so many um, important tips right you, get, you you become a part of that culture that network and that's important for the success of any of any um, undertaking Strategy number three, get your family on board, but don't expect everybody to be as passionate about everything as you are. Each one of us has our own gifts and our own interests and our own personal desires. And so we have to be mindful of that. Enjoy every single activity that you do on the homestead regardless of how many people are involved in it and when you do that then you're gonna see that everybody is contributing something to the well-being of the homestead strategy number four think holistically there's a principle in permaculture that says integrate rather than segregate and so what that means is that you have to look for all the possible ways in which you can utilize the resources that you have for more than one simple purpose give me give you an example here so here we have chickens this is um, an area where they're spending winter and so and so here we have the chickens are producing eggs and they're starting to it's it's mid-February now, so egg production has, has increased. Um, so we're getting lots of eggs now. But they're in this section here where we are going to have some new growing areas. There's going to be some new garden beds that are going to go here. And so what we are doing is having the chickens spend the time here. They're coming, they're scratching, they're, they're fertilizing the soil. They're essentially preparing the ground for us to come in the spring and just um, create some garden beds and grow things here. Strategy number five. Oh, excuse me. I forgot my gloves. Uh, so strategy number five is always plan for every task, every chore, to take at least three times as much time as you originally intend. And this is what happens. You, you, might, you might have this, this uh, idea, I'm going to work on this today, should be able to complete it in two hours, or in one hour for that matter. So you come out, you have what you need or your site, and then you realize that you forgot your gloves in the house, so you have to go back, right? So that's two or three minutes that you're adding to that thing. And then, you know, one of your tools won't work. If you have children, you have children, be prepared to spend a lot of time looking for misplaced tools. It, it is useful to think, and I think it's very important that you say, I'm gonna be able to do this in one hour or two. But be aware that most likely it's gonna take you four hours or six.
that's heavy which brings me to strategy number six you work very hard you you spending a lot of energy and effort into this but the fruit of your labor is the greatest reward and that is going to be in the form of the food that you bring to your family food that you bring to the table but also the cash profits that you can obtain from this kind of work and so to us even though it started with us just trying to to grow our own food pretty soon we were producing more food than what we could consume and so on our second year a friend who came and asked well if you have so much more of that food would you consider selling us some and so what we did was um, for the remainder of the season we'll give this person a weekly box with whatever we were getting from our garden so by providing food to somebody else and getting some uh, cash benefits from it we decided well might as well just step this up because there's some other people who who are talking about this the word is out and so on our second on our uh, the following season we had a, a program with about 10 families that we were feeding and it continued to grow every year last year in 2021 our CSA program uh, we had 75 members but it all started with us just growing food and and trying to help others so there's many many ways in which we can make this a profitable um, undertaking in something will benefit the entire the entire family strategy number seven this is a spiritual one and perhaps the most important for us and this is everything is in God's hands and not ours so what that means is that we have to accept all the uh, success that we have but also our failures with humility there's always much to learn this world is too complex and too big for us to figure it all out and so we're grateful for everything that we uh, do uh, we're grateful for every day that goes by uh, regardless of how that day has been um, we're grateful for the bounty that we get, we're grateful for the family that we have, for the friends, for the weather. And so and so that to us that everything is summarized on that on that principle, just be grateful um, of everything that comes at you. So I hope that this video can bring some food for thought. Obviously those are just some general principles and there's much more that we can elaborate on uh, but uh, but in our case those those seven um, things are, are uh, strategies that we've kept in mind uh, as we reflect back on our experience over the years um, that's something that's been very important to us and so we hope that you can benefit from it in any event I hope this is useful and that you uh, consider coming back we will be delighted to continue to share with you. In the meantime, we wish you well and may God bless.